Royal Ascot is, uh, is something unique. It's, uh, it's a wonderful race meeting and uh, anybody that's, uh, that's in uh, racing wants to win a race at Royal Ascot. Ron Hutchinson, Melbourne's champion jockey, left his home in 1960 to follow fellow Australians Scobie Breezley and George Moore to try his luck in Europe. Little did he realise he would spend almost two decades away from Australia and that he would be retained jockey to one of the oldest and most famous racing families in England and win the Gold Cup at Ascot. It is quite a story. At the end of the 61 season, I was approached by uh, a trainer, of Mr. Uh, uh, Bernard Van Cutson, and he uh, asked me would I like to or, or consider riding for the Duke and Duchess of Norfolk for the coming season. And I said, oh yeah, because you know, I thought, well, there was an opportunity of coming away and riding in England, which, uh, which I, I, I enjoyed doing. And so I met the Duchess, uh, it was introduced as that, and then I'd like to like to, like, I accept that I'd like to come and ride for the, for the Duke. Bernard Marmaduke Fitzalan Howard, the 16th Duke of Norfolk, was one of the highest ranking noblemen in England and a formidable figure on the turf. He was Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth's representative at Ascot for 27 years. He owned and bred horses for decades and he also owned castle stables in Arundel. His wife, Lavinia, the Duchess, was passionate about racing. She regularly rode out in her younger days and took a hands-on role with the training. Wonderful to think back after all these years, 50 years ago, wouldn't you think of it, it's a long time. And uh, I'm still here. Uh, I think uh, most of them, they're, they're, they're all gone, they've all gone to God. And, uh, and I look back on those and I cherish those memories so much. Uh, uh, it was great, as, uh, as I say. The Duke had said to me, well, it was in the, his first, my first season there, he said that the only race that in, the, in the racing calendar that he'd love to win was the Ascot Gold Cup. And he was happy to have the derby's life. He said, I'd like to, I read my ambition is one day to win the, uh, the Ascot Gold Cup. In 1974, Ragstone, a homebred son of St. Ledger winner Ragusa, had been brought along gradually by his trainer, John Dunlop, who skillfully took him step by step to maturity. By the time he got to Gold Cup Day, the four-year-old had put together a sequence of six wins. We had a discussion with uh, uh, well, John Dunlop and uh, the trainer and myself, the Duchess and the Duke, and uh, that's how uh, because we uh, uh, had, to, had to have some sort of a, as I say, uh, 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 pacemaker, which we, as I just said, with uh, Hornet, and he was able to sort of, uh, you know, take us up to the right time to go to the go to the front, you know, or go, go past it. And Farbug still taking him along from Hornet and Lost Silent Ragster. It worked out exactly as as we as as we thought it would. Uh, Yes, uh, Tom and Carter did a great job as you know, sort of a leading of a pacemaker and, uh, and we were able to, uh, you know, sort of I was able to follow Tommy and Tommy did a great job. So uh, all in, as it worked out, it worked out perfect. It just as well what the Duke and Duchess thought it would do and John Dunlop. And they've got under three furlongs to run now in the Gold Cup and it's far bug from LaSalle last year's winner, then Ragstone, Ron Hutchinson, then Freddie Head on OT, and they're well into the straight now. And it's I waited until the last sort of furlong, in, and I went to the front and uh, got there. I was, I was getting a bit tired on the, the, uh, on the near the line, and uh, I could hear the other uh, proverb, I think it was a horse that ran second, and he was, I could hear him coming, but uh, we just lasted long enough, and uh, it was a great, Relief and uh, a, a thrill to go past the Willie Post. A lot of excitement, very, very much so. I can remember 
Uh, the Duchess come in down, she was so excited that uh, she uh, came left the stands and came down to, and met me on in the middle of the track uh, to come in with the horse and uh, we were all very excited. It was a really exciting day and we got back into the uh, winner's enclosure and I can still see the uh, Duke of Norfolk there with, uh, with the uh, Queen and all that sort of thing. And, uh, yeah, he was in, and he wasn't well at that picture of time, he was on a walking stick, he had a, if I remember he had a walking stick, but anyway, it was great to see him there and, uh, and uh, enjoy it all, you know, and, and for him I think it was uh, like a, a dream come true, come true for him as well, yeah, it was great. Ragstone the winner, so the Duke of Norfolk with his first ever runner in the Ascot Gold Cup. The Duke of Norfolk, the long-time representative of Her Majesty here at Ascot, wins the Gold Cup with his first runner and the richest Gold Cup ever run, 19,431 pounds to the winner. We had a great party after the race, after that day over there, the Duke arranged to have a, a nice uh, party for all the race with all the staff of the stable and everybody, so we had a great night. And it's a, my lifetime, it's the number one uh, race that I, that I was lucky enough to win. When you think of, you know, when you win a race like, uh, like the Ascot Gold Cup, uh, and then 50 years ago, 50 years later, you're still out and about talking about it. So, you know, it's a great thrill, never to be forgotten.